Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to our talk show. This is PS Talk Show. PS, you're invited. Good morning, everyone. So in this video, we would like to take you around the world that we will see some cool things and that blow your mind. It's actually simple things if we don't really pay attention to it. Yes, it's as simple as uh, waving your head or uh, even nodding your hand. Uh, I'm nodding your head. Uh, you know, some of us sometimes you don't really uh, take it as something serious. Yes, that is true. But when you see those things from around the world, you'll see why it's just as important as having communication with a verbal communication. Yeah, especially uh, when you want to go abroad, uh, you might have some trouble communicating with their language, so you can use uh, some gestures to make it easier. Right, and also you have to be careful because some gesture might be normal to us, but it could be offended to others. That is so true. Actually, I don't think it would be that big. Uh, I know that it's important, but uh, I still have no idea it would be that good. Well, lucky you, because we will have an amazing guest that has been traveling and familiar with those things. We will have some chit chat and learn about some cool things from him. Please give it up to Mr. Didi Suleiman. Hello. Hello. Well, good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning. I'm wonderful today. Thank you. And what about you, all ladies and gentlemen? We are all going to like great. Okay. It's just amazing that we could have finally you here to be guest. Mm. And yeah. You must be uh, so busy that you spare your time to come here. Yeah, actually I have some project to do. I have uh, something to write for my pieces. But I am happy today because you have invite, uh, invited me to come here. Well, that we are also glad that mm -hmm. you're here. So everyone, this is our amazing guest. He is fun professor that you wish he, you have him in your class. I mean. He is full of ideas. Your class would never be boring. So anyway, so as we said before, we will talk about non-verbal communication. Right, Acha? Yes, I'm sorry to go listen to this. You seem so curious about it. So let's get into it. So sir, don't you start with a simple introduction about non-verbal communication? Yeah. Sign language and other things. Yeah, I think uh, this is a good idea for you to have this topic about nonverbal communication. But you know, let's start uh, with the amazing thing in our film, the cartoon film. You know, the cartoon film uh, nowadays is the film that is nonverbal. You know, like Oscar, Sound the Ship. Uh, do you have any other cartoon? That's uh, the film, uh, you know, probably in YouTube we have Outboard or something. Yeah, this is not verbal communication, but you know, the children, the kids, when they have to see, to watch the film, they understand. They are loving. Uh, they are cheerful. Uh, probably they would be sad if seeing the film with not verbal communication, and this is sad. So we can communicate with others, with listeners, readers, not only with words, like in us in English literature, we study literature, we study words, we study sentences, but without the uh, words, we still communicate indeed. That is the good thought, I think. Yeah, you talk, you talk about research. Yeah, yes, sir. That is mm -hmm. right, that we were also talking about how important nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. Do you say so? Yeah, this is very important. Sometimes um, uh, it is important because when we say something like, oh, yes, this is, uh, this is out of our mind to use my fingers, my hand. This is important because it says something, okay? Uh, this is impossible for you to be happy, but you are still keep in your hands, in your body, but we have to say it. Although if you are uh, speaking to foreign, uh, to others, uh, although you do not understand the language, probably you can see uh, the mimicry and you can see the expression of 
our face and you could understand whether she or he or they need help, they are sad or happy or something we can uh, read from the gesture, right? So this is very important. Well, it's getting interesting now, I can. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I have lots of questions being answered right now. Okay. Uh, but... Oh, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I know you're just as curious as me, but we will have to come back after this performance. See you guys. Okay, give a pass. Mouse in the House Created by Somya Rajendra Illustrated by Tania Vyas And published by Pratam Books There was a mouse in the house Grandma saw it first Mouse, she screamed, jumping up the sofa the cushion fell on the floor. Where? Asked, asked Pa. Climbing up the window, he pulled the curtains down. There! shouted Ma, leaping up the table. The plates fell with a crash. Get him! said Mitun to the cat. The cat looked at the mouse and fled under the bed. Mouse! screamed Mitten, running behind the cat. I will cast it out, said Ma bravely. She took out the broom and poked here and there. Mouse! shouted Ba. Behind you! Ma looked at the mouse and fled under the bed. I know what to do, shouted Ma jumping down from the sofa. She rolled up his paper and poked here and there. Mouse yelled Ma, climbing the window even higher. To your left, Grandma looked at the mouse and fled under the bed. Oh no, said Pa softly. He couldn't go any higher. He climbed down carefully and fled under the bed before the mouse could see him. Mouse in the house, shouted so everyone together, but woke baby up. She set up her mat rubbing her eyes sleepily. What was that on her pillow? It had two eyes, four feet, and a long tail. Mouse, said baby, clipping heavily. Baby looked at the mouse, and the mouse fled with baby right behind him. Leaping up the sofa, Climbing the window, jumping up the table, tumbling over the cushions, running in between the curtains, scrying over the plates and out of the door. What a great performance, isn't it? Yes, I like the performance. Alright, so everybody, we are ready in our talk show. PS talk show, PS you're invited. Yeah. Okay, before we discuss further about nonverbal communication, I am curious if you ever experienced some words or unique things in nonverbal nonverbal communication than when you were good. Well, yeah, um, the nonverbal communication, you know, the difference between uh, how to call uh, other people how to call our friends, uh, whether in Indonesia we have to use this gesture, come here please, come here. So this is uh, our hands like this. It means that we call somebody else, come here. But in America, uh, giving the waving hands like here, it means that you have to go out. Whether we have to get out. 
but uh, we have to use our hand like this. No, it means you have to come here. Come here. This is the gestures. So when uh, you are calling somebody else, but you please come here, it means in America you have to go out. But if you want to invite, just you can just like this. Please come here. That is the difference uh, in the nonverbal communication. Yeah. Mm. That is so interesting. Okay. Okay. What about the story? Is there some kind like story in nonverbal communication? Okay, the nonverbal communication. I think and we believe that uh, nonverbal communication has been existed before the verbal communication. So nonverbal communication in the past, we use our face, we use our postures, our gestures to communicate with others. So we have the evolution, we have the change uh, from time to time. Okay, that is the, the story of gestures. Probably uh, it can be believed that uh, the verbal communication, you know, like in Egypt, we know huruf paku, and then we know uh, the drawing in the cave, in the stones. That is how um, the prehistoric man in the past uh, tried to communicate with us. So this uh, language, like the uh, language, is the nonverbal communication, and then we now use our communication. You know, um, the history of English, like um, before English uh, exists in our language, probably uh, in Flintstone, you know, the film of Flintstone, like the language, go, 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 and then go, 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 go. It, uh, it is go, how to express going, go. Run, 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 run. Okay, in the past, probably, we used to get run, 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 and run is a language. So, this uh, non-verbal communication has been existed before the verbal communication like this. Sunanese, Japanese, Japanese, Arabic, English, that is uh, our verbal communication. But in the past, uh, we know uh, the language, uh, not language, the communication is in the form of non-verbal communication. Yes, absolutely, that's right. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is a serious study about it. Uh, mm -hmm. but is there any specific factor uh, that affects non-verbal communication to happen? Yes, uh, there are some factors. At least we have three factors here. Okay, the first is okay. The participants, participants in the communication process, adapt to each other's speaking style. Yeah, probably if you have to go to university like this, you have to adapt your clothes, right? Uh, if you are in your house, probably you will not uh, using this uh, outfit. Because when you have to say to your lecturers, you have to adapt your style, for example, learning forward, mat matching the other speech way, Assuming similar posture and gestures. Okay, the first is uh, matching the other speech rate. Speech rate means if you have to say to somebody else with the speed speaking, so you have to adapt also. And then, you know, if the lecturer is in slow motion, I mean, saying with calm or this style, so you will also adapt. That is how uh, we adapt our verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Also, also the postures, uh, when you uh, see your listeners, your readers uh, with, with the different posture, like, um, okay, I am sitting down here, and then you come here, then you will say something as the student, Probably you will adapt to my posture, so gesture you will sit down to make the same. That is the gesture, that is the non-verbal communication. This is impossible for me to, to have you 
uh, speaking with you and you are standing, I am sitting. So you will adapt. So this adaptation uh, formed by nonverbal communication. Probably uh, in Indonesian culture, we have salim. And this is our culture. Probably, uh, you know, in Arabic, uh, there is uh, uh, there is no salam in our culture, right? Salman, you know, in our culture, I am as the lecturer, and you will uh, uh, shake my hand and with uh, touching to your head or to your cheek or something. This is our culture. You know, in Arabic culture, um, uh, we know Shakhan Salaman, uh, they're one of our obligation to meet each other, uh, each other is to have Salam. But Salam has two cultures. Also. The first uh, Salam is in our culture, Assalamualaikum, that is Salam. But in our culture, to meet other with Salam is Salam is like this. So we have two meanings. The first Salam is to say Salam, and the second meaning, Salam is to have Shakhan. And our second would be different culture, different uh, non-verbal communication. If you are here uh, having the culture of salam, uh, touching uh, my hand for your heads, but if you meet other people in foreign culture, English, American, Australian, you have to shake uh, the hand with uh, this one, okay? Not this one, not this one, that is our culture. So you have to adapt. Um, you have to match the other speech, right? Assuming similar uh, posture gestures. So, uh, meeting foreign culture, you have to shake hand like this, not just by touching the hand. And we have the uh, what is uh, the different different culture. When I ask uh, somebody else in North America or foreign uh, public speaker come to our department and probably our students will shake hand by touching uh, the hand to the hands and the speaker asked me daddy why our student uh, shake my hand and touching to the hands this is our culture so, so probably we have to adapt uh, whether we we can respect the public figure the speaker from uh, Western countries, but you can we, 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 because we are learning English culture, English uh, language, so we have to adapt. Just uh, giving uh, check hand like this. Hi, how are you? This is good. It's fine. Uh, not by touching to the head. So this is the culture of actors pronouncing words with the same uh, accent. And then the second one is people in interaction move together in a kind of dance. Yes, I mean, yeah, because you uh, we are saying your uh, legs, your body, and your head uh, moving, this is them, but they are not aware of uh, their synchronous movement. He found uh, out that uh, each culture has its own characteristics. So, uh, if you are uh, having the habitual action to express your emotion, and you know also the English culture has the language of expression. Uh, probably uh, the Indonesian ex expression uh, exists in English language. So we need to have the habitual action. And the last is culture established standard for non-verbal behavior. It means that uh, this is the factors how the culture established standard for non-credible behavior. I think that's so. Yes, it's amazing. Knowing, knowing how, much, how many cultures around the world. Right. Uh, imagine mm. uh, how many non-credible communication you should remember. Yeah, that must be a lot. Anyway, after we talk about the evolution of non-credible communication, we all that we all know that nonverbal communication also is in a culture change. Yes, that's totally true. Culture established standards for nonverbal behavior, but what about the other factor? Is that really matter? Yeah, actually, um, nonverbal communication uh, is general, uh, general, but sometimes we have the different one. 
you know, like uh, in Arabic, uh, if we are touching the beards, I think this is uh, the respect. Our respect would be by touching the bit of Arabic culture. But you know, probably uh, our culture will be not good by touching the bit of Arabic culture. Yeah, um, if you are talking about how many cultures and nonverbal communication, I think uh, the nonverbal communication is general, but sometimes this is different. Sometimes this is different. Like in Indonesia, when uh, you do understand my speaking, you will say yes. But in India, this is no. Yes would be. Uh, cha -cha. Yes would be like this, and yes and no would be like this. Sometimes this is different. And uh, this is good for us uh, as uh, English literature students. You need to learn culture and you need to learn the object or the targeted uh, country when you have to visit. Okay, this is the point. This is the most important thing that uh, when you need to go to Australia, America, Poland, France, uh, Greece, you need to read the habit action, the culture, and also uh, the non-verbal communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, on the next topic, non-verbal communication, maybe we have a uh, lot of types of special movement, vocal and gestural. Mm. But how we, we define each one of them? Is there any similarity or difference between them? Well, uh, as you can see in the slides here, okay, the types of nonverbal communication, body movement, kinesic, yeah. Probably from us, uh, the perspective of psychology, we know this is kinesic. Kinesic means uh, the first body movement that can be translated into words, and they are used intentionally to transmit a message. Yeah, this is uh, could be translated means when you are saying, um, "Do you want to drink coffee today?" Mm -hmm. This is the body movement. Mm -hmm. So it means we, you can translate it into dog. Okay, uh, your daughter, whether you will say yes or no. Yeah, you are thinking dogs or yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Without saying yes. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, or by uh, moving your hand, so we can translate it into yes or no. Um, yeah, uh, that is the body movement. And then the illustrators uh, kinetic behavior that accompany what is said verbally. Accompany, uh, accompany. Uh, okay, kinetic behavior that accompany what is said verbally. Uh, you know, sometimes if you are now adult enough, so we uh, we have to say something to our uh, junior or our kids by uh, okay, you are good, good, and you are smart. And when I say non-verbal, you are smart. That's good. It will um, accompany what is said, and sometimes uh, the meaning is more than is said. When I say uh, you are smart, and then you are smart. That's good. This nonverbal communication will add. Sometimes uh, it will uh, have the more confidence for the person, the kids. So probably uh, because you are now the fifth semester and you are learning culture. Sometimes please use your nonverbal communication when you are saying something. When you have the public speaking. Use your gesture so the audience will more understand whether we are saying like this. Okay, uh, good morning, students, and okay, good morning, morning. Uh, using your face, your expression, your gestures is um, more sophisticated. Okay, and then see a regulator's kinetic behavior that control turn taking and other procedural aspect of interpersonal communication. Turn taking. Okay, turn taking like uh, you know one of our hadith in uh, Rasulullah saying, if we are pointing others, don't use our single finger. It, uh, this is not polite, as our Rasulullah said. 
But if you want to say something, you can just use, please come here. Use uh, your hand, not your points. Come here, not just come here, but uh, come here. Using uh, our hand is uh, better. That is uh, our chun taking, please. Uh, time is yours. Time is yours, no. Please, time is yours, no. But uh, time is yours. Like uh, we have, we see it and then uh, giving the, our hand to our uh, listeners. Uh, this is good because we have to control uh, to control our chin taking and the last is affect displays kinesic behavior that express emotion kinesic uh, you know today uh, we have uh, our cultures in emoticon in our whatsapp or twitter or facebook and probably our emotion would be represented by the emoticon in our whatsapp when you are happy, sad, down, or something, well, we have many emoticons. So, uh, this domestic behavior that expresses emotion, I think this is, um, yeah, we can improve our nonverbal communication. And we are learning here. Yeah? You are the fifth semester when you are learning language, I think you have to use yeah, your behavior, your domestic uh, body. Good. Okay, I got it, sir. That's mm -hmm. really insightful for us, and okay. probably that could be informative for the people who are watching the show at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sir, can you ask more about uh, number of communication? Sure, please. Uh, so many people told that uh, truth about lying mm -hmm. also can be seen from our body language. Yeah. Uh, is that true that uh, people actually can come up with the conclusion? Uh, that whether they are lying or not uh, mm. by our uh, behavior. Yeah, I think this is right. Uh, um, truth about lying. You know, uh, language uh, is for the truth. We can say the truth by language and also uh, we are lying by language. So language is uh, for the truth and uh, for the liar as well. And this is right well, when you ask about uh, uh, lying. Probably our our language could be truth, but body movement cannot be uh, cannot be lying. That is uh, that is right. You know there are many experts in uh, you know expression expression because when uh, somebody else are lying, the body. Uh, cannot be uh, okay. Cannot be uh, let's say cannot be detected by lying because uh, body movement is our brain. Our brain will uh, give the movement to our body. That is the truth. Whether our statement is lying, but our body is the truth. And this is hard to lie our body movement. Friendly the way during the conversation is relevant with our own words and honest. It's very interesting. Uh, as we know that you are actually a lecturer, mm. uh, have you ever found this a situation on a daily basis? Like maybe, you know, uh, your students are lying or that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, this is um, uh, my habit, you know, like, sir, I don't bring my assignment. When you are using this, my assignment, it means that he's lying, she's lying, because he or she uh, didn't do the homework by uh, her touching the hands, it means it's lying. Well, whether I forget to bring, forget, or you do not do your assignment, uh, sir, I do do my assignment, okay, lying. So there are many ways whether, you know, uh, when uh, your body movement, like uh, our leg is like this, cross, it means that uh, he or she is distracting. I mean, he or she is not safe by uh, crossing the legs. Uh, and also when uh, the cases of the students, uh, I'm sorry sir, so you didn't do. Uh, Sometimes I have the tricky uh, question. Okay, when you forget to bring your assignment, what time you have done your assignment? 
Uh, that is the tricky uh, question. Uh, probably if uh, he or she, the student, forget to bring the assignment, he know uh, when the time she uh, has done the assignment. But why? I, yeah, by the gesture. I, I know. It's very early. But first, really, we only have one topic that to discuss. In the previous segment, we have talked the number of information as its own cultural factors. But I want to ask one question: Is there any cultural man understanding in mental of communication, and how we deal with this? Yeah, um, you know, probably if we know this is in Indonesia, uh, we don't have any um, crucial misunderstanding in body movement or nonverbal communication. But probably the misunderstanding uh, of our nonverbal communication would uh, happen when we communicate to other countries, other culture. Uh, probably uh, it would be. Uh, misunderstanding but uh, since we have the same culture we have the same gestures same uh, body movement i think uh, the misunderstanding would be uh, minimal okay uh, thank you sir for the insightful information okay uh, okay welcome. guys uh, now we know many information about non-verbal communication uh, that probably we can use in our uh, daily life uh, other than that, uh, it's important to become aware that uh, of, of cultural differences in our behavior. That's right. So that's it, guys, for your explanation, tips, and solution. Non-verbal communication consists of all types of communication that take place without words directly influence the message we send and receive. Alright viewers, uh, looks like we're at the end of the show. Thank you viewers and crew. Uh, we apologize if there are any mistakes. See you in the next episode. PS Talk Show, PS Green Friday.